G'day, hi, and welcome. All right, been snowing for freaking four days now. Enough. I don't play anymore. Winter go. Be gone with you. All right. Anyway, uh, World War Three update. First off, you know who you are. Uh, shout out to Matthew Sullivan and his family. Uh, this guy's been. Geez, I don't know how long he's been a subscriber. A good while, anyway. Um, there you go. You got your shout out. Made made you famous. He's also a YouTuber as well. Uh, uh, yeah, so you, yeah, so Matthew Sullivan. So there we go. Uh, done and done. There we go. All right, so let's just jump into it. So Turkey um, going to uh, man. <laughs> I write this stuff down in the van when it's dark at night, and sometimes I have to. Uh, what, what what did I write here? Uh, Oh yeah, they're trying to join the uh, Shanghai Corporation, which you know Russia, tri China, the BRICS, Iran, India's kind of in it, <coughs> and basically it's basically um, the equivalent of NATO and banking systems and all that stuff too. But it's like the equivalent of NATO for the Eurasian Pacific empires, as we'll call it. Remember the world being split into two. Anglo-American Empire, petrodollar, Europe, Canada, United States, uh, Eurasian Pacific Empire, China, Russia, Iran, uh, India, BRICS nations, etc., etc. Et and these two are the two major empires on the world right now. So that's why you can't just look at it as one country, China's an empire, and Russia's an empire. No, these are empires together. Right now, I think Russia and China are at the highest height of their relations uh, in ever. Uh, the, the, they have the, the highest bond now, uh, which, with what's going on in the world, you would understand why. Uh, U.S. dollars at a 13-year uh, high. Uh, again, a lot of people, and this is where I get mad with the alternative media. Uh, it's not so much that it discredits, but they're starting to do the, they're, they're getting into their own confirmation bias, and they can't do that. They've done such a bang-up job this far, don't, don't, you know, say, oh, look, uh, the economy's recovering because Trump won. No, the economy's recovering because it's spun. <laughs> you know, uh, the reason why the economy, economic, major economic collapse hasn't happened yet is because it's rigged. It was the same reason why Hillary Clinton was supposed to win, but somehow they couldn't rig it enough. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the dollar's at a 13-year high, and the reason why they're doing that, I think gold dropped below 1,200 or something like that, yeah, 12, a little under 1,200. Because uh, 50,000 gold contracts, uh, paper contracts, the uh, what they call futures contracts. Again, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a financial expert, so you can check this stuff out. But that got dumped, uh, and they've been doing this for since 2008. They've been you know, dumping all these futures contracts, paper gold, on the market. And then what they do is when things are kind of going their way a little bit, they buy them all back again. So when they dump it on the market, it lowers the value of gold, silver, that type of thing, the precious metals. And then when they, they, they want to swing the market the other way, they buy them all back. So it's the same people. They're buying and selling their own stocks is what they're doing. Uh, again, I'm not an expert on that, but that's this, the, the layman's person understanding of it is they're buying and selling. They're manipulating gold is what they're doing. Uh, they just found a loophole that they could do it. And that's why we don't have the economic collapse, right? Uh, but that said... Black Swan event, uh, you know, like Trump winning, is that a Black Swan event or or set up on purpose? Maybe they let him win on purpose, told Hillary Clinton, yeah, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win, but don't give it to Trump because we could blame him for the economic collapse. That said, who knows, right now uh, there's an air conditioning company that Trump is also, he's working on Ford big time, he's working on this air conditioning company to keep the jobs in the States instead of sending them to Mexico. That type of thing. So, uh, this one, oh yeah, uh, and this is kind of good news. Uh, according to Trump, he doesn't believe in a, in a nuclear, uh, and I mentioned this before, a uh, nuclear first strike. Uh, but we're not sure, you know, there's like three levels of government. You have your normal level of government. Uh, you have, you know, the, the, the shadow government. And then you've got what's known as the deep state, right? So uh, these three levels of government, 
they they function differently, but the corrupt government obviously covers like like all these FBI agents that, and and the FBI. There's 16 intelligence agencies, 16 intelligence agencies in the states. I think we got one here, possibly two. <laughs> you know, well, maybe three because the NSA is in Canada as well. It's just not as prominent. Um, again, it's just because we don't have the budget for it. Uh, Trudeau would be just as bad as Harper or worse when it comes to that stuff. <coughs> but, uh, but the but the end of the day, uh, he the deep state might still be obviously the deep state is still pushing for war, and this this is what lines up with the you know Rothschild Rockefeller banking. Henry Kissinger would be probably the head of the deep state, so to speak, uh, if you were to put a face on it. Uh, so people who have those uh, align alignments. The problem is, is Henry Kissinger's too. It's there's people that we don't know what their names are yet that that are doing this, right? Again, you got to wonder who Kissinger actually answers to. Uh, but he, uh, a lot of guys like Paul Craig Roberts, Joe Skousen, and, and other analysts, too, uh, even Steve Pachanik, you know, like Kissinger is up there. He's he's not. He doesn't answer. He might answer to somebody, but not too many. You know, uh, that type of thing. So this guy's pretty much at the top. That's why these are such prominent figures. Why, if you take these people out of the system. Uh, it really, really, I mean, the chips will fall where they may. You, there will be chaos no matter which way we go. But, you, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so, next to that, we have, uh, yeah, this, uh, the Caesar drill in Syria, uh, 5732, uh, is Protection Act. And this, I think, is... The, the, well, I shouldn't probably get into this right away. No, I'm, I'm going to come by, back to that because that, uh, this is the meat and potatoes of this this uh, this update. So ISIS used uh, chemical weapon attacks uh, apparently 71 times in Syria so far. They're, they're, they, they've they're, they're accused of that. Uh, I guess the you know the UN delegates and stuff like that, and the Russian delegates that are trying to, uh, you know, do the, again, coming from the Russian government, maybe, they're, maybe they are, maybe they're, I mean, this is a dirty war, no matter, maybe Assad has been gassing people all along, you don't know, you really don't know, but I don't think it's Assad, why, because Assad had control of real chemical weapons, when I see people there going, oh my god, I got chlorine gassed, oh my god, am I gonna die, oh my god, no, you'd be dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the people treating the like if there's a chemical gas attack, you cannot treat the people uh without being in full hazmat and and you know uh have one of those uh what's called uh, uh what, what's the proper name for the suit? It's like a hazmat suit, but it, it's fully isolated like it it's basically uh a bio you know like what the, the CDC will use. And it has its own oxygen, like it's not a filter. You're, you're, you're basically it's a like earthbound astronaut suit, and uh, that's what you treat people with chemical warfare. And you can't just wear anything. Uh, if you grab somebody with certain chemical warfares, um, the, if you're wearing plastics, it'll react to the plastic and melt to your skin. This stuff is a, even if you're wearing a gas mask, chlorine gas. It, it absorbs through, it's a nerve agent, it'll, it'll go there. You're not going to be, you know, you don't get slightly gassed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you get, you, you know, it's, 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 it's an exposure thing that uh, sarin gas, for example, you've got a minute or two and you're dead. Uh, even if you're full suit, if your skin is exposed at all, that area of your skin, like if you, if you get sarin gas and, and it just exposed to your hand, that hand is going to be like done. It's going to kill the nerves in that hand. And I don't think you can ever, like you, you can't, people can survive it, but masses of people can't survive it if it's a real chemical attack. So what I'm thinking is, is uh, these aren't really, it, it doesn't sound like a, a government attack. It sounds like a, a makeshift, uh, let's see what kind of stuff we can kind of make. Chlorine gas isn't impossible to make, I get that. But to make it in a dose that's powerful enough, weapons grade, weapons grade is hard to make uh, of anything. Uh, 
uh, anthrax, anything. I mean, anthrax is a natural element, just so you know, for some people. You, you can see there's some in the bush here, I'm sure. Uh, you got to be careful because it's a spore that, that attaches to your lungs and, and, that, and you can't breathe. It's like chemical asbestos. <laughs> that's, a, that's basically, the, basically you can um, describe anthrax, right, and stuff like that. So these type of things, again, I, I would suspect that it's mostly the rebels uh, because if they, they're, these chemical attacks aren't effective enough... We shouldn't be hearing about a few people dying if it's a chemical attack. It should be tens of hundreds dead. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to get out of the zone. You fire five canisters into a city block, nothing is going to survive there. Nothing. Uh, and if something does, like, I mean, you'd be talking about one or two survivors. Uh, again, research like uh, chemical attacks in World War I, the, that was chlorine gas, and that worked pretty damn fast. If you couldn't get your mask on in time, you were pretty much, you know, half the guys would die with their masks just as they get their masks on. Like, this stuff works pretty potent. Uh, and that's World War One. the refinement now. So, these are things to watch. <coughs> Again, uh, whether the Assad government and the Russians, I don't think the Russians are doing any chemical attack. They don't need to. They've got... Fob 500s and 750-pounders, and <laughs> you know, they, they've got like the TOS flamethrower there. It takes out eight city. It's a T-72 with rockets on 24 thermobaric rockets. Takes out eight city blocks. You know, up to like uh, I forget it, 800. The closest this thing can fire to give you an idea of the power of these weapons for safety purposes, they cannot fire on a target with the TOS system closer than 400 meters. Uh, that's a little more than four football fields, just because they might take themselves out. So they don't need chemical weapons when they got that kind of firepower, right? Um, that said, uh, the Syrian offensive, uh, moving along with the uh, uh, with Iraq <clears throat> and the Hama province on the border there, uh, they've been they they. Uh, South Front did a live footage coverage. They got kind of it. Kind of looks very Mad Max ish because it's not you know it's kind of like hodgepodge military vehicles. You got some Humvees with some extra armor plating and stuff. You know, just kind of strapped and bolted and welded to you know like there's a homemade armored vehicles. I don't know if you've seen the homemade armored vehicles of Syria <coughs> and um, Iraq, but they're, they're quite interesting uh, that type of thing. But it, get the idea that it's it's a a light armored brigade that's that's doing the fighting there, and they're they're surrounding and stuff like that. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But uh, anyway, uh, Turkey apparently is setting up a second military base inside Syria. Uh, they've already got one, and yes, the the Turks have been pretty much fighting the Kurds. They're they're not even really fighting the Syrians in in Turkey. They're fighting the Kurds. I do believe the Kurds will eventually... Turkey's going to go down one way or another. I think Turkey's uh, at the point where Saudi Arabia was maybe about a year and a half ago or, or so. I think Turkey's just at the beginning of that point where it's going to be destabilized from within. Now, I think what's going to save the Turks, and you see Turkey out there trying to play both sides a bit, but it does look like Turkey, Egypt... They're really moving toward, even Saudi Arabia to a point, but Saudi Arabia is not ready to do self-preservation yet. Saudi Arabia has no friends speaking, uh, government speaking. If they don't do what the U.S. does, the U.S. might very well help Iran with the Houthis to completely overthrow Saudi Arabia. If the Saudis don't do what the Russians want, or the Chinese want, uh, the Chinese will crash their market, and take away their inve oil investments. But the Chinese, they just want the resources. They don't give a shit if you die or whatever, or who you're fighting. The Chinese are always covert. They, 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 play the, they play the sneaky game. The Chinese are very clever. To, it's amazing how under the radar the Chinese can actually stay. Um, to give you an example, uh, how they colonize without firing a shot. Uh, just like what they're doing here in Canada is just moving people. And I'm not against Chinese people or anything like that. But it's the tactic is there. Uh, you've got Justin Trudeau basically doing uh, what they call, uh, it, it's like a pay for play. It's, it's, it's basically, he has dinner uh, with these uh, billionaire Chinese delegates who are linked, whoop, there goes this, 
looks like I'll be shoveling today, uh, linked to the Communist Party of China, which again, we know his dad was you know, a, Mao, a Maoist uh, supporter as well. So uh, Justin Trudeau does have communistic leanings. He's more of a progressive than a communist, uh, but he, you know, cultural Marxist type. Uh, but you could see he's very, very, you know, l allowing the, uh, you know, the housing. That's how the Chinese are doing. What they do is they use foreign investment to buy up factories and houses uh, for overprice, or, you know, to drive the prices up, move their people in. When they move their people, and most of the people that are going to be there, not, they're not going to be in it. The average Chinese person that comes to Canada is not going to know what, the thing is, but the idea is to get the human trafficking, and, and right now the fentanyl uh, problem in Canada is pretty much coming from China. Uh, and when these people get here, once they colonized an area enough, then you have like-minded people. Then, then the Red Army can kind of come in uh, covertly and then do secession movements. They've done this through uh, Asia for, mm, forever, right? Uh, that's why they end up going to war so much in Asia. Uh, against each other. Again, Asians hate each other with a passion, as generalized. Because I know there's, well, I'm a Japanese guy and I'm married to a South Korean girl, or uh, I'm a Chinese guy and I'm married to a Taiwanese girl. Uh, you know, but I'm talking the overall sentiments, you know, uh, Sunni, Shia, uh, Japan, China, you know. Same fire stoked, you know what I mean? Same fire stoked. Uh, if Japan was border, like a border nation to China, they would have probably killed each other long ago. Uh, that type of thing, uh, but that's just the way the world is. Like, uh, China and India, like, you know, like they, they, they're trying to work. The governments are trying to work with each other, but they're still shooting at each other on the border, disputed border lines as well, a couple of times a year. So it, it's it's again. So the Chinese do play a very clever hand, staying under the radar, uh, but they 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 are a player. They are a big player, and they're definitely working with the Russians. So the Russians are working a little more. They are covert as well in, in, in what their goals are, but they're working overtly in Syria so you can see them. And with when it comes back to Turkey, what Turkey, they're in a rock and a hard place. Right now, like, I don't think Turkey's ever going to be able to join the EU. So Turkey's saying, well, okay, well, we're going to go join with Russia and China. But they're not going to be able to just do that. They're not, you know, like, Erdogan, I mean, this guy... If there's a guy that can piss off his neighbors, there you go. If there's a guy that can uh, burn his own bridges, it's that guy. So with Erdogan at the helm, uh, for the Russians to work with the Turks, there's going to be concessions the Turks are going to have to make. The big one meaning, and considering the size of uh, Turkey's role in NATO, uh, you have to understand, Turkey was brought into NATO mainly to play well with Israel. That was the main, main thing. Now, if Turkey flops on NATO, which is a possibility, like the signaling is there. I think if they do, they, they the, the Turks are, they're not stupid either. They they know because they know how the game is played. They, you know they're the ones supplying ISIS, buying the oil, etc. They, they 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 play in on it too. So they know who the players are. They know what destabilization will come to them if they just jump ship. So they can't you can't do it. You have to find a way to sneak your way. You got to put your pawns in place before you can do that. And they know that with Turkey, the biggest problem they have is the Kurdish population. The YPG will definitely go to war with them like that. And the United States is already arming the YPG, which Turkey does not like. So if Turkey was to get more pro-Russia, more pro, and, and join the Shanghai, um, uh, uh, Shanghai Corporation, there's a good chance that you know, the banking and everything will have to follow suit in Turkey, meaning they'll ditch the U.S. dollar, which, you know, again, right now, this is what a lot of the fighting is about, is to save the petrodollar. It's about the Greater Israel Project, the Oded Yan plan, that's a Zionist neocon plan. That, that's what you're seeing in Syria. It's regime change. It's not, you know, it's never about democracy, women, and children. There was no reason to go to war in Syria and arm these terrorist groups in the first place. And because the American people don't want to fight, they armed ISIS. Uh, it's so well documented. You have State Department admissions. You have Obama admitting it, Clinton admitting it, uh, 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 John McCain admitting his buddy. El-Baghdadi, he's got pictures with El-Baghdadi and other ISIS leaders. 
<laughs> you know, um, and now news are leaders. Now, those are my friends, the good guys, the moderates. <laughs> you know, like, it's so openly admitted. Israel supplying ammo to uh, the uh, you know the American M16. And there's a lot of people who think, oh no no, this was just stuff that was left over in Iraq that ISIS got a hold of. Some of it, yes, but you're telling me. A-10 pilots flying around in Syria or Iraq cannot find convoys miles long of freshly painted Toyota trucks that were bought from the United States that came in after the occupation. You know, like they, they came in a, or after uh, the U.S. left. You're telling me these A-10 pilots don't have the skills to find these people with the amount of surveillance? Again, 16 surveillance sta uh, uh you know, uh, agencies in the States, and you're telling me they cannot find jihadis running around the desert with flags waving, they can't find these people? It's a proxy army. Uh, I know it's hard to accept that your government does that. And I mean, I know my government to some degree is doing that too. I mean, our support in Ukraine means we're... Again, George Soros is pretty much running Canada right now. Just look at the bills coming in. Bill C-16... Uh, it's all coming in on the LGBTQ thing. That's why I pick on that so much. It's not because I actually give a shit about the lifestyles of the LGBTQ. Uh, I don't care about that. What I care about is the agendas. And Bill C-16 coming in in Canada. It's a hate speech law. Like, again, these hate speech laws, they're not for gender parity or gender equality and all that stuff. It sounds great. That's what they, that's what they wrap, the, they use buzzwords to wrap up what the real goal is. The real goal is to silence dissent. It is now going to be illegal to dis disagree with somebody if you don't use the right pronoun. But the, who are they going to use that against? Well, I'll tell you the, who they're going to use it against. They're going to use it against media. They're going to use it against dissenting voices. Oh, oh this person is a, is a hate speech because they said something anti-trans or something like that. And, and it offended the trans community. Okay, fine. Uh... But now you're going to give them a fine when you, they don't pay the fine. You shut them down. When you shut them down because they're hate speech, then you can throw people in jail. And then after that, you know, after you're hauled away to the gulags, when the gulags get full, they just put people up against the wall and shoot them. That's how communism works all the time. You don't see it today. You see it 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road. Um, and that's how these laws, like when you examine these laws, these laws are so overreaching. But they use the buzzwords. That's why the Agenda 2030, United Nations Agenda 2030, that's all you hear about uh, in, in the, the Parliament right now. That's all they're talking about, that and the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. Now, mind you, there's a lot of people out there, such as Japan and uh, Shinzo Abe is out there saying, well, without the United States, the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership is kind of stupid. You know, that was, you know, the idea was to get the world to have access to that market. Now... The Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership, could global trade like that be good? Yes, it could. There's like uh, 40, uh, 40 trillion dollars or four gazillion dollars, uh, you know, like 40 billion dollars or whatever the trade market that would have brought in. Could be good. Problem is, is we don't know what was in the, the agreement. It's like CETA right now, which is kind of passed, um, kind of not. Uh, it's, it's, it, I don't really know, like if you listen to the Canadian government, it's saying that, yeah, it's passed. You listen to over in Europe, you're like, no, it isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't. Uh, so I don't know what's going on there. Uh, and we don't know what's in it. That's why people don't want it. That's why I think Harper lost the election, was because of the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. Not because marijuana voters, not because of uh, uh, the niqab and hijab and divisionism. No, 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 no. There's not a farmer who would clearly understand what Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership is, that could sit there and say, yes, this opens up my farm to exporting, that's great. But however, understanding how NAFTA took all our jobs here and sent them over to China and India and Mexico and Venezuela, or not Venezuela, uh, um, uh, Brazil and, and places like that, we know that Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership, just a little bit that's been leaked is... 10 times worse than NAFTA, meaning their population replacement is the big part of it. Get all the cheap labor coming in so that you don't have to send the jobs over there. But the thing is, is we, we use these things to regulate away our jobs here and to send to countries with no labor laws, no, no uh, environmental laws, and then say, oh, well, look, we have a clean environment. Uh, you know, So pe people wouldn't go for that. 
But anyway, getting back to Turkey. So Turkey's opening up a base in Syria. Obviously, this is, you know, an act of war. Um, and, of course, John Kerry's out there saying, well, you might as well just give, uh, you know, break Syria up in all to these little, you know, factions. This will stop the fighting. Give uh, this, the Kurdish this region, give the uh, the Shia this region, the, the Sunnis and the Baathists and, you know, the, uh, you know, all over. we'll give everybody their little chunk, which is the Oded Yan Plan, Greater Israel Project, balkanize the, the Middle East so that it can, uh, these are, be, Tiny, tiny countries, all smaller than the than Syria, uh, than Israel, and then none of them will ever be strong enough to uh, challenge Israel. That's what all this death and destruction is about. For for a good part of it, the other part is the Anglo-American Empire, gas pipelines, uh, the Golden Rule. He who has the gold rules. If you control all the oil, control all the resources, the minerals, whatever, all the and, and look at Iraq, all these new minerals and stuff that they they want to get out of Iraq. That's what it's about. It's not about the women and children and the people, democracy. Yes, some of the soldiers that go, they go believing that they're fighting a good fight, but it's only when they come back they realize that they were used. This is why the DHS is so terrified of uh, the Iraq veterans because and, and veterans in general, because the Iraq veterans is the first generation that really, like, yes, the Vietnam vets a lot of them figured out the war was a sham. They didn't even know why they were there, and they were drafted to go there, so they weren't even volunteering for the most part. I mean, yes, sure, there were volunteers, but, uh, you know, they were drafted. They had no choice but to go. World War One, World War Two. they drafted. Most volunteered in World War One and World War Two because they didn't realize uh, what the dangers truly were, and they didn't realize that the war... These wars didn't have to happen. None of these wars had to happen. And then, of course, Henry Kissinger's with his lie about the Gulf of Tonkin incident... Uh, this is why this man, we should arrest him on crimes against humanity. I mean, over a million Viet Cong died, 58,000 or almost 60,000 U.S. troops died. Um, we had, I don't know how many Canadians died in the Vietnam War, but we had at least 400 and, I think, most, because most of them were like expats and stuff like that. Uh, but over 400 that, that went to, I don't know how many died in, in uh, Vietnam, but you get the idea. These guys, they didn't have access to social media like they do today. But the Iraqi generation, or Generation Kill, if you haven't seen that documentation, that, that, that excellent. Uh, um, they went there, but they come back and they find out there were no WMDs. And when they did find chemical weapons in, in Syria, or in, in Iraq, they were American-made. The ones that Saddam got in 1948 when he was propped up by the CIA. So people are catching on that it's just a lie after a lie after a lie. Hillary Clinton spilling the beans of how they armed the Mujahideen uh, to fight the Russians. And the thing is, that was true, but what they didn't tell you is that they actually started arming the Mujahideen and training them before the Russians invaded. And in other words, I'm not trying to say the Russians are innocent all the way. I mean, again, if you want to see the, the Russian corruption, just look at Chechnya arming both sides. You know what I mean? Like, that's what the Americans do as well, the American government does. And I'm not against the people, I'm against the government, I'm not against the Russian people, I'm not against the American people, I'm not against the Israeli people, I'm not against the Turkish people, I'm against their governments. That type of thing. Um, ISIS, I'm against them. Why? They're terrorists. <laughs> they're terrorists. Most of them are mercenaries, most likely. But there are a lot of them that are, you know, they're, they're the, the ideologue aspect of it. These aren't the ones in charge. The, the ones in charge are Mossad agents, CIA agents, etc., etc. Um, and, and again, ISIS is either the luckiest organization, terrorist organization in history, just to have weapons just constantly falling, falling into its lap, and just to happen to know where every UN food supply truck is coming in. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, and to to get a like a six week warning before every airstrike. Like I mean, jeez, uh, you can't even make this stuff up. I swear to God. Um, anyway. Uh, so France has one base in, in Syria. Why? I have no idea. Uh, Russia, uh, the U.S. has two. I don't know, and, and I know Russia's building a couple there. They have the base of Tartus, uh, uh, Latakia, I think is the second base. And I think they're building a third base or a fourth base. And they probably have a whole bunch of little caches all over the place. Uh, EU Army. Um, yeah, they basically... Uh, and you guys are going to laugh at this, but it's like uh, Resolution 420. <laughs> just stop. Just stop it. I know. Just stop it. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, 
Yeah, so they figure it's going to cost uh, about, uh, oh sorry, not resolution 420. Uh, they figured it was going to cost 420 pounds sterling to run the EU army every year. So what they're saying is that they're go it's not a done deal yet, but it, 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 the EU is pretty much, it looks like they're going to ditch NATO. Now, the thing about the EU army is what they're proposing is to spend three two to three percent of GDP, the same as NATO. But right now, most of the members, uh, the twenty eight members of NATO, they can't, they don't have, they're not spending. This is what Donald Trump is saying: spend your fair share. Uh, we can't cover it. Uh, so the, mo most aren't spending their 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 fair share. Now, for Canada here, because again, we border the United States, we have. NATO and NORAD. Now, Trump's stance on Canada, I think we're, he's going to play hardball with us. You know, but he's got to be careful too because, again, he can't just come at us uh, the way he can go out Mexico. Because if he does, and I don't think Trump has the intentions to do that. Because again, if he plays hard on the trade, remember, 9 million Americans rely on Canada for their jobs. So, okay, well, you made it hard for trade, all of a sudden... Okay, well, this your his own trade deals could backfire on him. Uh, okay, well, we're going to make sure that you do this. Yeah, but all those people that, if you do that, all the people that we have hired for, you know, in the States, you're going to, you know, you're going to force us to have to fire them. <laughs> you know, like that, it's not going to be our fault, it's going to be your fault. And the other thing is, is remember, uh, if they play too hard a ball, then you could see a, a high rake in hydro prices in the eastern seaboard, like beyond belief. To, to make up the deficits of trade. So the gas, the natural gas, again, we, we, we're dependent on each other. We, we, we can't have a trade war without hurting each other. That, that's the type of thing. We can have trade wars and benefit ourselves, say, from China, because uh, it doesn't mean it wouldn't hurt at all, because they make all the cheap stuff, and then, again, you cut off that supply of cheap stuff, then all of a sudden you have no products in the stores, right? Because nobody else makes anything anymore. But you could ease your way away from that. But with Canada and the United States, uh, it's a different thing. Now, getting back to NORAD, uh, with NORAD, I do believe in NORAD because that makes sense. If we go back to the Cold War, the, the, re the, the first Cold War and this Cold War is the same thing. I don't know why people say, we're going to begin a new Cold War if, if we keep doing this stuff. We're in it. <laughs> I mean, if, if, you, if you look at the first Cold War, it was nowhere near as nuts as it is now. I mean, this is like beyond crazy. Um, and uh, the thing is, is that, yes, the Russians will be sending bombers over the North Pole. Uh, we know that. They'll be flying directly over our country. Canada is the battleground for World War III. This must be understood. Uh, and the thing is, is we're a bit with our pants down uh, in some ways. Now, as far as a Red Dawn invasion, I don't see that anytime soon. The more thing that's going to happen with Canada is the Russians flying air power over us, that the, the the idea of them dropping off tanks in the Arctic and rolling six hundred miles to seven hundred miles to the south, uh, you know, like from like Yellowknife. I mean, it's there's like only a handful of roads that go in and out, uh, that type of thing, to get to the you know, it just it would cost so much to move an army from there to there. They wouldn't do that, but they could build up on our coast and put bases there if they could take it, because uh, their only real opposition is like the the Inuit. And they're not really opposition. So the Russians could set up bases there. They could set up S-300 missiles and slowly encroach in. Same with the Chinese. They could do that. Like, our basically, when you think about Canada, we're caught in between uh, basically China, Russia, the United States, and Greenland. These are our neighbors. These are our closest neighbors. Even though Russia technically doesn't border us, but it borders Alaska. You know, this time of year, you could actually drive from Russia to Alaska on the ice bridges, you know, like the land bridges that, 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 that uh, you know, when the ice freezes over, you got these uh, ice truckers and stuff. They have amphibious vehicles that can get across the Arctic ice is what, the, you know, what I'm saying. Um, now, why that's important is that I'd rather take the money from NATO, get out of NATO altogether, put some more into NORAD, uh, but the thing is, is, if, again, if I'm ever Prime Minister, uh, what I would suggest is a neutral country that doesn't get involved. If we take the money we'd save from NATO, 
NATO. We, our, our membership, I think, is four hundred million a year. God knows how much uh, billions more on top of that we spend. But just that money savings, okay? You take half the money, you give it back as a tax break. You take another quarter of it, and you put it into, you know, healthcare, retirement, veterans affairs, and then you take that other quarter. A quarter of it, which is still a hundred million, uh, which sounds like a lot, it's, it can be burnt up pretty quickly if you're not, if you're not smart. But you put it into civil defense. That's it. Uh, ships, uh, tanks, planes, surveillance, radar stations, all this stuff. We've already got the infrastructure for it. We just need to upgrade it. And if we're not paying money over there and have warships over there, again, why? I get why our warships are patrolling the coasts of Somalia and stuff like that. But, again, that's not really, you know, it, we don't really need to be there, you know. Uh, I do believe in a non-interventionist uh, action. Yes, if a country has an act of aggression towards us, we can go to war with them. But getting out of all that stuff, the money we save, we could put into our own domestic military and be ten times the military that we have at half the cost. I, I, I can guarantee you. Uh, because the way we do it now, it's so inefficient, right? Uh, but anyway, so uh, the Pizzagate thing, I don't know if you guys have been following that. It looks like all of Washington, D.C. is in on this thing for, maybe not all of them, but Obama apparently paid $65,000 for pizza, which equals girls, little girls, dough equals little boys, to the White House uh, this was uh, shown in one of the emails. Um, and if you don't know about the Podesta brothers and Pizzagate, Hillary Clinton, again, linked to this. The Clintons, uh, it's, it's a pedophile ring is what it is. Uh, there's also, like, uh, basically, you know, like emails talking about chicken to Moloch, which is uh, basically underage boys and stuff like that that they sacrifice. God knows how evil this really truly is. Uh, yeah, so I already mentioned Bill C-16. Uh, Bill C-28 and Bill C-25. Uh, 25, anyway, these new bills coming out in Canada, you might want to look at those. There, this is the United Nations Agenda 2030 stuff that I was talking about a couple of weeks ago or a month or so ago. Um, yeah, so we also know about the uh, Turkish forces basically clashing with the uh, Kurdish forces uh, in Syria. Now, the meat and potatoes, okay. Resolution, uh, basically, 5732, Caesar Civilian uh, Protection Act in Syria. Uh, this bill, I think, is coming from the Congress uh, or the Senate, I'm not too sure, but it's... 5732, I wrote it down three times to make sure I had it right. 5732. This is for a no-fly zone in Syria. So, this tells me very quickly uh, a lot about Trump. This tells me that they went around Trump before he gets inaugurated. Okay, I don't know if Trump can do anything about this bill. But if that's a no-fly zone in Syria, that's Hillary Clinton's... That puts us on the brink if they put this thing through. So I'll, I'll name it once again. I don't know if it was the House or the Senate that passed, trying to pass it or passed it. Bill, they tabled the bill. I don't know if they passed it or not, but Bill 5732. No-fly zone in Syria. So we're going to be telling Russian Federation, which already has no fly zone in their areas around their bases. You go near their bases, they'll shoot you down. That's that's already what they're at. The, the the Russians get out ahead of it. If you're talking about a no fly zone, they just do it. Why they beat you to the punch? That's the idea. Uh, but uh, how am I doing for time? Okay. Uh, but the big one is, uh, yeah, they just this. You know, again, they this is the shadow government. Behind, you know, try to pass everything on. You know, when nobody's looking type of deal, and it's very clear that a no-fly zone is what it means, and it, it, we've been talking about this. So they want war big time, and I think the idea is to 
push us into a war before Donald Trump can even respond to it, before he can even pick his cabinet. So there's that, plus there's still, I mean, Hillary Clinton can still steal this election with the, uh, the Electoral College. Now, electoral co- people in the Electoral College have been death threats all over the place. Uh, we we're seeing this stuff. Like, it, it, this is unbelievable. There's been no discussion on this fly zone uh, with Trump. This is, and if Trump is for it, then, then we know Trump was definitely a sham. Uh, there is some things he's doing good. Is he going to flip too much? I don't know. He's going to have to flip a bit. There, there's no doubt about that. But again, well, we can only judge him on his actions. Uh, I'm hoping not, because if if we have, if they put in the no-fly zone, then a civil war will break out in the states. And I mean, I'm not talking SJW civil war. I'm talking you will have a military coup because. People know what that means in the military. They know if we're telling the Syrians they can't fly, we can shoot down MiG-23s and a handful of MiG-29s, no problem. But if we start shooting down Russian Federation, they can shoot back. And not only can they shoot back, but the Russians, they're ready for war. They're ready for World War III. They, I do believe the Russians don't want war. They, they've had tons of opportunities to start the war. They didn't take it. So I think they, they don't want war. I'm not saying the Russians will win the war, but there, there's, and I get comments from time to time, and I, and I don't think people understand what I'm talking about here when they say stupid things like this. And I'm not calling you stupid, stupid, but I want you to think about what you're saying. Oh, we, well, our technology is superior, so we could take them. At what cost? Let's say the United States wins the war. What, is there going to be five or ten people left on the planet? Think about what you're saying. A war with Russia. Okay, we're not talking World War II anymore. Like, World War II, there was two things that made World War II survivable. Number one, the power of the weapons, although they were pretty powerful and the numbers were there. If we had the amount of bombers today as they did in World War II, tens of thousands of bombers, uh, those numbers with the power of the weapons today, it'd be like, everything is five times more powerful than what it was in World War II. But the mobility is the problem. You have things that can be anywhere at any time, um, you know, 24-7. And you have missiles that can go around the planet and hit their opponent on the other side in under 15 minutes. Think about that. You have... uh, It would just be... The amount of people that would die would, would, you know... And if you think you're going to be the ones that are going to be victorious, the amount of people we're going to have to send to their death just because a handful of idiots in the Congress uh, are protected by FBI uh, and uh, CIA and, and DHS idiots that are traitors to their country, you know, who are mani- the bankers manipulate the politicians to get into another war for Israel. This is an Israeli war. All wars are Israel wars. All wars are uh, uh, bankers wars. And when you look at who's in bed with who. It, again, you're going to come to that conclusion. It's not, I hate this group, so I'm going to call say that. No, I mean, track, follow the money, you figure it out. The bankers, the, the the Greater Israel Project, that type of stuff. Israel likes to start the wars and get other people to fight them for. That, that's, that's what they've been, that's, that's their main strategy. The Samson option, look at that. Uh, but this, this putting a no-fly zone in Syria is going to get our people killed for nothing, for nothing, for the petrodollar. That's it. You know, that, that's what it's about. It's the petrodollar, it's the Greater Israel Project, it's the oil lines. That's what you're going to die for. You're not going to fight for the women and children. Yes, they, they, they do know how to throw people in front of cameras to, 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 to uh, charge up the, the populace to get them on board. But if you understand that it's all a sham and that it was orchestrated in the first place. We should be going after... The real enemy is the people who signed this bill. These are the enemy of humanity. They're the enemy of the state. And if we had some brave law enforcement and military, get off your asses, do your job, protect the people. Do you love your kids? If you have kids, don't follow the orders. Um, your paycheck isn't worth it. We're talking a possibility of a thermal nuclear war. We, I'm sure the Russians will probably let a few... Jet fighters get shot down. 
I'm sure they'll shoot down the Syrian fighter jets first, but you have to understand, for every one Russian fighter jet you shoot down, they will shoot down 20, 30, 40 of yours. They will take out your warships. And I think as soon as a Russian fighter gets shot down, uh, that type of thing over a Russian base in Syria, again, the Russians have already told, told said, we will respond you know, full force, full force on force. If you attack us, we attack you. So the escalation can be very, and Russia and China both have the same doctrine. If they think they're going to lose the war, they launch. The missile systems aren't in, they're not in play yet. So they might pass this resolution today and say, okay, we'll pass it today. We'll let the, 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 the people riled up. And then in two years, we'll, we'll actually enforce it. That type of thing. They could be doing something like that. Why? It's a tactical move. Uh, it gets people's eye off, off, the, off of it. And then you, can, you just spring it on the people. But no, this is one we can't let go. This is the death of humanity uh, to a great degree if we allow this to go. And the people just following orders. Anybody that thinks a no-fly zone in Syria is a good idea. This war is a scam. It's a sham. We shouldn't be there. We should pull out of there. Yes, isolate the Middle East so that we can let the tribal lines... There's going to be bloodshed no matter which way we go. But let the tribal lines reestablish themselves in the Middle East and they'll stop fighting. Stop arming them. That type of thing. So all these people, they're terrorists. These people that sign bills like this are terrorists. They're terrorists against humanity. They're terrorists against the people. There is no honor amongst these people. These are not good people. These are bad people. Uh, these people want war with Russia. That is insane. It's insane. Oh, well, we could, we could kick their ass because our weapons are better. You have you no clue of how many people are going to die on that stupidity. There is no, we're better than them. If you ask most veterans that actually have to go and fight these horrible wars, most of them will tell you they wish, you know, they wouldn't wish it on their worst enemy. They, they tell you how horrible it is to, you know, that. Not just so much that they have to kill everybody, but all, watching all their buddies getting blown apart. Meanwhile, the world elites, they're, they're, they're tucked away. They don't have to fight. Anyway, if World War III breaks out, I don't know when it's going to break out. It does look like they're trying to get it going before a, Trump can be inaugurated. Why? Because they could still call martial law now. Uh, they could still, there's a lot of, Trump can't really do much right now. Uh, so it's only his actions. Now, if he goes along with it, then he's, he's enemy of the state. He's enemy of humanity. Uh, the big thing is, if he blunders on the economy, that's because he blundered on the economy. Uh, and plus, he's got everything working against him. So you get it. You're, you know, prepare for an economic collapse either way. But the thing is, is they will use the, the war to blame the economic collapse on. Or Trump. That's, that's, they got two scapegoats right now. But the thing is, is Israel wants war in Syria so that they can balkanize the Greater Israel Project. Again, I, you research it. It's evil. It's totally evil. We need to throw Israel under the bus. If you want to piss in the, the sandbox and, and, and make, you know, fight your neighbors, that's up to you, not up to us. Play well with your neighbors or, you know, if you want to defend yourself against your neighbors, fine. That, that, that's okay too. But to fight these wars for the bankers and for, the, for Israel, it's not worth the rest of humanity dying for them. Just because they think they're the chosen people, no, uh, that that's just that you know. And if they were the chosen people, trust me, there, if if there's no God that that would want that, they wouldn't want that. They wouldn't want people killing each other just so we could protect these people. No, that's not the that's not the role Christianity had. I don't know about Judaism, but you know that's not the role Christianity had. I'm not a religious scholar, but I could clearly tell you that is not what. You know, uh, thy shall not murder. And to purposely create war from one country to the next, for no reason really, uh, is committing murder. So that's the biggest sin. So whether they're chosen people or not, they're breaking the own... The, 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 so you can't go along with it. So I, I do believe if they pass this no-fly zone in Syria, we will have war with the Russians. Uh, how many people are going to die? I do believe the Russians will call, do a couple of bluff charge verses. They will be very bloody. They will sink warships. They will call the bluff. What they'll probably do is take out every warship in the Mediterranean and in the Black Sea. That's probably what they'll do. They'll just hit you like that. They'll hit Eastern Europe very quickly. 
Uh, they'll probably they will probably make a, a Blitzkrieg style attack. Uh, they will take out all the missile si uh, missile defense systems before they can be set up. They will take out. All, I'm sure they'll take lots of losses. There's no doubt about that. But they will be. They'll do that move. They'll kill tens of thousands of people <laughs> in a very short amount of time just to show you they're serious. Because remember, the Russians don't care what politically you think about them. If they're oh my God, they're they're this or that. They don't care because they 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 know what's at stake. The Russian the Russian government isn't stupid. I'm not saying they're innocent or anything like that. They are a corrupt government. There's no doubt about that. But they also also know that. If they get this wrong, they lose everything. So, when they call the bluff, I think before the no-fly zone, Vladimir Putin will have a nuclear weapon detonated as a show of force. That will be the beginning of Putin showing the crazy man hand like North Korea, like a Kim Jong-un. Only thing is, is Russia can actually do something terrifying. Uh, where, you know, South Korea, yeah, they're, they're, they're terrified by Kim Jong-un. But, you know, North Korea is not a threat to the world. Russia can be. Russia can do a lot of things. Uh, there's already talks about the U.S. doing cyber attacks against the Russian banking systems and stuff like that. They're really trying to force Russia into a war. Um, and the Russians, again, they know the, the big thing for them is to just sit it out, let the United States collapse on its own. They'll, they'll win big after that. But however, there could be, you know, if that happens, again, if we do an Iceland solution and don't bail out the bankers in the next one, we could probably save the system. Or not save the system, but we have to do away with the whole system. I mean, I can't believe that all the CIA, FBI, DHS, or that, and the NSA and all those other groups are that spineless, like the people that work there. I can't believe they're that traitorous to their own country. That, oh, the guy up top said we have to go and have a no-fly zone in Syria, okay. Like, he's fucking kidding me? Do your fucking job. Do your fucking job. Read your constitution. Enemies foreign and domestic. Well, you got them in Washington. <laughs> you know, not just Washington, but you got, you know, the head of the FBI. This guy, again, running defense for Hillary Clinton. The Justice Department. There is no justice. You're removing rule of law if you don't do that. So, again, I don't know what the answer is going to be here, but I do believe if that goes through, uh, they will have to incite the draft because once the Russians start fighting, they're going to have to put out the draft like that. They're going to have to get the draft going like that. Oh, well, you got to go fight. Well, I tell you, if we go to war, I will be fighting. But it won't be over there. It will not be over there. Um, if we want peace, we have to, we're going to have to fight for it. There, there's no doubt about that. I, I just don't know what the date, wait, the date and time is. I'm not making threats against anybody, but it looks like, yes, the tree of, liber uh, tree of Liberty will be watered with the bloodshed of patriots at some point in the States. There's just, there, this is a guarantee. No-fly zone in Syria has so many implications, foreign, uh, abroad, you know, like, and, 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 and domestically, that it will lead to a military coup in the States. Uh, it'll be a bizarre military coup, and the thing is, is this will definitely charge up the second wave hellhounds, Watch for world elites, particularly around the inauguration time, uh, getting knocked off. But also to watch for, um, what you call it, uh, uh, the third wave hellhounds is a full military coup in the States. Uh, this, I think, the Donald Trump election was the last stage before violence. That, that's the last stage before the violence. And if they're going to double down, which you have to understand, this also shows that Trump might be the real deal because if they're trying to double down this fast, to, I mean, these are acts of de desperation. If you understand what a no-fly zone means, you're not going to negotiate with the Russians in Syria. They are not going to let you fly where you want and attack the Syrian government. They've already said they're going to defend the Syrian government. The Russians, trust me, the Turkey shot it down. The Russians got even with the Turks more ways than you know. I mean, look what's happened to their economy since they shot down the, the Russian fighter. Uh, the Russians aren't stupid either. You can't bait them real easy. You could probably shoot down 10 Russian jets. They, they won't respond right away. They're going to do something else dirty. Uh, big thing is you'll probably see a lot of stuff blowing up in the States if we start taking over. The sabotage is going to be astronomical. Um, 
it, it, you know, nuclear power plants, that's what the Russians are going to do. They're, they're going to, they'll, they'll get back that way. Why? Because then they can't get lured into a war. Again, they'll hurt the economy. They'll do, they're going to do stuff like that. And the thing is, is before you get the, wow, we're going to get back at them if they do this, do that. The other thing, the thing is, is we are in that position because it's been manufactured by a Syrian no-fly zone. There is no reason to have a Syrian no-fly zone. ISIS does not have aircraft. They don't have, and they say, oh yeah, but it's to protect all these hospitals that Assad and the Russians are bombing. Uh, the coalition forces, again, show the proof, show the proof. Maybe they're right. I wouldn't doubt if the Russians aren't killing a lot of innocent civilians too. You can't do those kind of air campaigns without it. But that said, how many hospitals have been confirmed by the U.S. being hit? Quite a few, uh, hitting the you know the hospitals in Syria. Like I, I mean that type of thing. But the thing is, is this war wouldn't be happening had it not been for the Greater Israel Project, the Rothschild Rockefeller Banking, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. George Soros, Sigmund Brzezinski, Henry Kissinger, Clintons, Bushes, Obamas, Blairs. You get the idea. So anyway, this I think it, it just maddens the hell out of me because. Where are the brave law enforcement military? Like, are they all cowards? Really? Like, are they all that coward? To, oh, I've got to keep my job. Well, oh, oh, those two people are too big to, to put into jail. The FBI, okay, there were some rumblings because they didn't put Hillary Clinton in jail. Well, if you're an agent, you've got access to information, get it done. Oh, yeah, but the director said no. Well, maybe you might need to investigate your director. Oh, yeah, but I'll lose my job. Numbers, strength in numbers. You get enough people against it, against them. Again, get the job done. You've got moles in your system. You've got, and again, just figure out who's running defense for who. If they're running defense for all these politicians because, oh, they're too big to jail, like Eric Holder would say, then you need to know who you need to start with. Uh, that type of thing. Because if you don't do the right thing, everybody's going to pay. They're going to pay with their lives. They're going to pay with their liberty. All that type of thing. There is no reason to go to war with Russia and China. We don't need to. We don't need that at all. Just to save the Rothschild banking system and the Greater Israel Project. That, that's, these are the two main things. There's a lot more to it than that. Yes. There's the economy. There's the petrodollar. There's bankers. There's, you know, there's so many factions in there. I get that. But, again, look, if you're at home, this is Thanksgiving weekend in the, in the States. Uh, we've already had ours here. Look at the people that you're sitting around. Do you love them? Uh, any of them over the age of uh, 18, you know, on a war that you already know is going to, that is a lie already, that's going to lead us to a bigger war. On a lie. Look at those people. Do you love them? Do you want to see them go fight and die on a front line because, oh, well, the government said I have to go and kill those people over there. Like, there's a fine line between bravery and stupidity. I get that. But, Patriotism versus blind patriotism. A real patriot speaks out against real tyranny, not, not this, oh well, uh, they, wait till they attack us. When you see it coming, you know the Russians are going to respond. You know they're going to respond. And we're provoking them and provoking them and provoking them. They, they've had every excuse to go to war, and they haven't taken it. It tells you they don't want to go to war. Seize on that opportunity. Wrangle the, the, the people here that are making the world a dangerous place. No, there is no such thing as too big to fail. No, there is no such thing as beyond the law. Arrest these people. One charge. Crimes against humanity. <sighs> Deputize me. I'll have it done in a week. <laughs> I swear to God. You know, I'll hunt these, down, these people down like you wouldn't believe. Dead or alive, I'll bring them in. Just saying. So anyway, uh, if you like this kind of content, please consider making a donation channel. Links down below. Thank you so much to everybody who has. Thanks to that. Rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Be true to yourself. Be true to us. Always, always do the right thing. And have yourselves a great, a great day. Eh?